Good morning and a happy Sabbath to every one of you. This morning I would like to address to you about builders. Are we all builders of Christ? Are we all builders in Christ? Today, let me ask a question. Do you know what a goat is? A goat? It's a kind of sheep, is it? What exactly is a goat then? We can say that it is a four-wheel drive SUV version of a sheep or a sheep which has hair instead of wool. And it may even have a goatee. And if you know what a goatee is, a goat has it. And also it could be a lost person living in the last days. And we have to see in what condition we are. Turn your Bible to the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 32 and 33. Matthew, chapter 25, verse 32 and 33. When Jesus comes, he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. This is taken from Matthew chapter 25, verse 32 and 33. So the Lord knows the difference between a goat and a sheep. Does he? And that's why he is going to separate the sheep from the goat. What is the criteria by which God will separate the goat from the sheep? And if you see in the scripture, continue reading in chapter 25, you see that the sheep feed and clothe and even gave waters to others. And they were a very caring animal. And they invited their visitors for lunch and they also went and visited one another. They also went to the jail and visited the prisoners. And whereas the goat stayed back home laying back in the coach. In other ways, in other words, we can say that Jesus' sheep are very caring creatures. They are very concerned about the welfare of other people. So they care for one another and also they look into the needs of other people. Look at Matthew chapter 25 verse 40. Here it says, The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. So isn't this a very wonderful message that is given to us? If we help one of our brothers, then we are helping Jesus Christ. And when we, when we go out and help someone who is in need, are we helping the uh, person who is need, uh, in need of help? We are helping the person and also we are helping Jesus Christ. If we go over to the hospital and um, say some kind words to the person who is sick, how much console they will be and how much uh, well they will be feeling after that. And even a simple word is very beneficial. <coughs> and if we also go and take some food to a person who is needy, how much thankful and grateful will the heart be? These are all small things that we may not think it to be a very big deal, but to the person who receives it, it's a very great blessing. Amen. In the great judgment day, we will not be rated by many things that we think is a very great achievement. We will not be judged by the number of Reformation Herald that we have read, or we may not be judged by how many times we have read our Sabbath Bible lessons very carefully. We will not be judged by how many times we came very early to the church or what kind of responsibilities we held in the church. All these things are important in our life. But the judgment will be done by the act of kindness that we have done upon our fellow brother. This is the greatest criteria that will be used during the judgment day by observing how we had been dealing with our 
brethren or our friends is what is going to matter most. And by these actions, God can tell us how much we are like Jesus Christ by the actions we do. And also, how we treat our neighbors. That's also a very important aspect. We can say that there is much more greater bless a blessing in a cold drink of water than in a whole evangelistic um, meeting. In the 33 years of Jesus Christ that he lived, we can see that he has de devoted his life into seeing what his uh, neighbors or his friends needed and tending to the need of his uh, fellow brethren. We also need to do the same kind of thing, looking into the need of our friends. We can say that many of us are builders. Yes, we are. But we have to see what kind of builders we are. Are we trying to build our own self, or are we helping others to build them? And we are also sometimes trying to build ourselves by trying to break down someone else. Whether we like it or not, this is the fact. We figure out that if we can throw enough mud on someone else, we can say that we are much cleaner. And is that how we are supposed to be? No. And we cannot do that, and we are not supposed to criticize or point the mistakes of others. Amen. In the Bible, it is said that we, we point to the small speck that is in someone else's eye, whereas we have a huge log in our eye. So we have to see that how our condition is, Amen. and then try to rectify our differences or difficulties, and help others to be like Christ, not like us. In, uh, in the Bible, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11, it says that, Therefore encourage one another and build each other up. That's what the Bible says. We are supposed to help to build one another. It's, we can call these things as if we are in a construction business. We are helping someone to build their character or to build their um, thoughts in Jesus Christ. We are not in a radio business or in a mission shop business or in a janitorial business, but we are in a business where we create someone to be like Jesus Christ. We are the builders who construct people, and that's what we are. The Bible sanctions and compliments whatever we do. But we should never tear down someone just because of that, Amen. not even our family. Amen. And we are also not to criticize anybody else. Amen. That's also a very important thought. There was a conductor who got into a, uh, into a train, and he was checking the ticket of each of the passenger. And as he was checking each and every one's ticket, and after he uh, checked everyone's, he, uh, he tries to catch everyone's attention, and he says, OK, all the passengers have to listen to me. All of you have got a wrong ticket, and you are in the wrong train. So the next stop, all of you have to get down. And all the passengers had a very puzzled look you know, on their face. Well, if one or two made a mistake, then that's OK. We can say. OK, something somehow they made a mistake and they got uh, into the wrong train. But you know what was the actual reality? The conductor himself was on the wrong train. <laughs> he was supposed to be in, in another train. And thinking that that was the train that he had got into, he says, everyone else, that you are in the wrong train. And this uh, the condition many times. We try to say that someone else is wrong, whereas we are in the wrong position. We have to think very carefully before we criticize, even though we are not supposed to criticize. Amen. I think that it is really high time that we stop hurting people or criticizing other people. Amen. We don't know when we criticize or when a small word is going to hurt someone else. But if you put yourself in that person's condition, you will know how much it hurts. 
if at all we like to be like Jesus Christ, a builder of people, we have to stop all the bad things that we do, Amen. knowingly or unknowingly. Sometimes we can say that, oh, my neighbor doesn't deserve to be loved by me, or my friend doesn't deserve to, be, uh, to have a comforting word from me. But have you ever thought of it this way? Do we deserve to be loved the way that Jesus Christ had loved us? And still did Jesus Christ love us? Amen. And he gave the biggest sacrifice that can be given for all of us, for even the worst sinner. Sometimes we see that we, uh, we act as though we are on a diet of green persimmons. Have you ever tried green persimmon? Is it, does it taste too good? So, the same way, the actions or our words are so bad to others and it, uh, people may think that something is really wrong with us. And this is a kind of thing that we have to be really careful of. Amen. We can actually go around trying to pick up the fault of each and every person around us. And we can also talk about the darkness that is around us. So for this, what we are supposed to do is we can carry a candle around us to show the light for others. But at the same time, can we just go on and keep complaining about the darkness that is around us? We cannot bring darkness anywhere, but we can drive out darkness by bringing in light. And this is what we are supposed to do. Amen. Every single act of kindness, every single word that we utter, if it touch someone else, is going to be a very great blessing to us and to the person who we come in contact with. Amen. Sister Ellen White says that Jesus came to the world to be a reconstructor of character, building and transforming the character of people by his divine power. He was in a remodeling business. He was remodeling people's character, their way of life, and their actions. And people may like this, or they may not like this. But whether they like it or not, it is our duty to help them bring closer to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ would have us to be a reward that the glories of heaven bestowed upon the overcomers. And it will be proportionate to the degree in which they have been represented the character of Christ to the world. So we have to see how we can represent Jesus Christ in this world and walk according to that. Jesus Christ was a builder of people, and so are his sheep. We are also builders of people. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, it reads, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up. Amen. So we have to be the building, uh, builders of other people. What is our profession by faith? We are to be builders of other people. We have to build people up. Everybody has to be happy because of our, us, because either we talk to them in a kind way, or we just pass by in their life, and down the road, they'll remember us maybe one day that, oh, because of such and such a person, we have been really blessed. Amen. And we don't want to be in a position where people don't want to remember us someday later on. And as for us, even as time goes by, we, we may look in our past and say, oh, such and such a person was a really good blessing to me. And also I was able to witness to someone else. And we also see how much of a blessing that was of our witness to someone else. And this is what Jesus Christ did. He went around blessing other people and also being a blessing to others. Everybody who had come in contact with Jesus Christ was blessed and was benefited. And Jesus Christ was a benefit to others. Galatians chapter 5 verse 13 says, 
serve one another in love. And once I have read a caption which says, he climbs highest who helps another up. And the greatest work is not building up skyscrapers, but building up people. Amen. Psalms chapter 10 verse 12 says, don't forget those who need help. And that's our duty. We are to help one another. Do all the good you can by all the means that you can. In all the ways you can, in all the places you can. At all the times you can, to all the people you can. As long as you ever can. That's our business and we have to keep it in our mind. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 24. Do not look out only for yourself. Look out for the good of others also. We are not to seek only for our own good. If we look out for others, someone else is going to always look out for us. And this is a very great principle of the Christian life. We look out for one another and we are a very strong and healthy Christian family. At one time, a visitor went to a hospital to go and visit one of his friends who was sick. And as he was waiting, he saw the nurse was cleaning one of the patients there. And that patient had leprosy. And she was unbandaging the bandage and then cleaning the wounds and applying the medicine and then tying back the bandage. The visitor who was sitting there and noticing what the nurse was doing was not so comfortable with that. And he told her, I wouldn't do that for a million dollars. And uh, you know what the nurse answered? Neither would I. But I would do that for Jesus Christ for nothing. Amen. 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 And you see how each person's words make a lot of difference. One person doesn't do that even for a million dollars and the other would care just for nothing for Jesus Christ. Amen. True Christians are not in the demolition business. We are not there to demolish or to break down someone else. We are in the construction business. I think we have to show this kind of characters with whoever we come in contact with. And we have to show how much of Jesus Christ is in our life. That way, people will see whether we are a real Christian or not. Maybe we need to talk less about our own achievements and our own self, and we may learn to talk more about Jesus Christ and His love. There are a few things that we may not pay much attention to, but it's a very important thing. We need to whine less and praise more. We have to hate less and love more. And we have to offer a word of kindness more than complaining. And sometimes it's better not to say anything than to say something that would hurt someone else or discourage someone else. A word of encouragement is a very big blessing in itself. If you see those people who are practicing very hard for this, a sports event or for a very uh, big job that they, they, they are going to take into account. And if you just try to keep their uh, enthusiasm higher, you see how their perf performance would be. And just consider if you utter a word of discouragement to a person, to a sportsman who's going to run a race, even though he knows that he has done really good, he would have a doubt on himself. So whether we utter a word of encouragement or not, we are not to try to discourage someone else. A tired family had driven more than 600 miles to go to another place and they wanted to take some rest for the night. So they stopped by and they were looking for a place to take rest in a motel or an inn. And most of the places they found did not have any vacancy. So they finally drive into one more 
hotel and then they go and ask to the receptionist who was also the owner of the place if there was any place that they could use for the night and he said oh we have been full since 6:30 and it was already more than 9 o'clock and he says but then i can help you find a place to stay and instead of being a very rude man he was a very good christian man and he made calls here and there and he tried to find out and by the sixth call he found a place to uh, for those family to live and the family was very grateful to this man and they they wanted to find a little bit more about this man why he took the pains to help uh, help them out and he says oh if i wanted i could have gone home at 6:30 itself when it was full and that was the time that i need to close but from 6:30 to this time i have helped 30 people who had come in and this is the kind of help that he would want to do onto others and the 30 people who had been helped by him were very happy and it was like a blessing to himself Amen. and he also said he he liked doing others a favor and helping others and we have to see are we like this man are we happy to do others a favor that's the kind of christian that jesus wants to call a christian and we also have to try to be the, the same kind of christian these kind of people would go the second mile and even would go the third mile and if we want to be this kind of a christian we have to go the second the third or even the fourth if needed philippians chapter 2 verse 4 says each of you should look not only for your own interest but also for the interest of others and that's what jesus did and if you want to be like jesus we have to look for one another do we want to be like jesus christ do we want to be as he was with one another Amen. then we have also to go the second mile or more in in the sbl bible commentary it says jesus reached the heart of the people by going among them as one who desired their good he met them at their daily vocations and manifested an interest in their secular affairs his strong personal sympathy helped to win hearts and this is what we are supposed to do he lived to help people around him and we also have to be helping one another there is a saying in my country which goes if you would not like to be forgotten as soon as you die and are rotten either write things worth reading or do things worth writing so if we do either of these things we will be remembered after even after our death there is a story about a banker who used to give some money to a beggar who was uh, outside the building that he worked and every time he cr- passed by and he put some money into his uh, collection box he saw that the beggar had some pencils right in front of him and he would pick up a pencil and say that you know i always insist in getting a very good deal for myself and i always insist that the person that i'm dealing with has to be a very good businessman and that's why i always pick a pencil from here and each time he did this and as time went on one day he did not notice the beggar outside his building and he didn't pay much attention to it and he forget about it months passed by and suddenly one day as he was going to the mall he saw the same person having a store outside the mall and the, the beggar immediately now he was a businessman actually not a beggar anymore he says do you remember me i remember you very well and the words that you have told me you never considered me to be a beggar you always considered me to be a businessman and your words helped me to be at this position that i am now 
And you all have to also note, uh, note that this man did not have both his limbs. And that is why he was a beggar in the beginning. But the words of the businessman, the banker actually, the way he had encouraged, changed the way the, uh, the beggar lived. And now he also is a businessman. Amen. And he says that he was the one who gave him self-respect and the encouragement to be in the position that he was now. We have to live to build others up. Amen. And we cannot love someone without helping them or offering a word of kindness to them. The strongest argument in favor of the gospel is a loving and loving Christian. And in Colossians chapter 3, verse 12, it reads, Clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And that's what we are supposed to do. Let me ask you a question. Why did Jesus Christ do all these miracles? Was it so that he can show his power? Was it to prove that he was divine? Was it uh, because he wanted to show his divinity? Well, we, we can say that it was not because of that. Because Satan can also do miracles. Amen. They were not done to show his power. But it was done to show his kindness. Amen. The, the greatest significance of his miracle is seen in the fact that they were for the blessing of humanity. This <laughs> seen in this of Ages, page 407. They were not done to help Jesus own self. <coughs> Kindness was the objective of Jesus Christ. And the miracle was just one method to show his kindness to others. Therefore, I would like to throw a thought upon this thing and you could either accept it or you can say that that's not the fact. Kindness is greater than miracles. The power to be kind is greater. The devil can also do miracles, but the devil cannot be kind. Amen. <laughs> and the highest evidence that Christ was divine was in the display of God's kind character. Such a life is the greatest of all miracles. John the Baptist's disciples one day went to Jesus Christ and asked him, John's, John wants us to ask you a question. Are you really the Messiah? So what did Jesus answer? Did he answer that, oh yes, uh, I, am the, I am Jesus Christ, I am the Messiah. No. Did he say like that? No. His answer was very simple. He says, stay with me and see what the actions that I do. See how many pupils are blessed. And then go and tell him what you see. Amen. And this is the thing that you can see in Matthew chapter 11, verse 2 to 6. If you go to and see the secure trees, which are really very tall, more than 300 feet tall, and they are really huge, do you know what is the specialty of these trees? Even though they are very tall, they don't have a very complex root system. The root doesn't go too deep. But then the, the specialty of this tree, the secret of this tree not falling off when there is a very heavy storm or very strong breeze is that they don't stand alone. They stand in groups and what happens is even though their root system is very shallow, the roots intertwine with one another's root and that is what helps them to keep very strong. Amen. And even though whether it's a very big storm or not, they're always standing strong. And do you know what will happen if they were to stand alone? The first time a very strong breeze comes, instead of standing vertical, they're going to be horizontal. That's how it's going to be. And this is the way that we are also supposed to be as Christians. We are to help one another in all the needs that they have. When we help one another, we are going to be grounded and rooted very strong in the faith and in the church. We are supposed to help them in the difficult times and also partake of the blessings that they have when they are not in difficult times. 
And this is exactly why we are all in a church. And this is why Jesus Christ established a church, to help one another. When we go home from the hospital after we have helped someone who was very sick, do we feel that, oh, uh, do we feel too much pity for the person who was sick, or do we feel encouraged that, oh, uh, because of our presence, the other person who, is, uh, who was in the hospital was feeling much better? We have to ponder upon such a small thoughts. Jesus looked to, if Jesus looked upon the help uh, on the human support when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, how much more we are supposed to be dependent on one another of our fellow brethren when uh, we are in trouble? Did Jesus Christ really need the support of uh, his disciples at that time? He had the support of his father from above and also the angels. But he also depended upon his disciples to pray more for him. And that, that's the same way we also have to be dependent on one another. We have to be also very alert for the opportunities that present itself for us to help one another. We should not wait for someone to go to the very lowest level where it would be very difficult for us to help. If we can nip something up in its bud, then it would be very easy. If someone needs a help, and if we can help him instantly, how much of a blessing that would be. And just imagine how much that small help is going to be matter. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, it says, Carry each other's burden, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. And we have to be helping one another, whether they need it or not. We have to see if they have some problem and then help them. When, when Jesus Christ needed support from Peter, John, and James, what were they all doing? They were sleeping. They were sleeping. And when he looked for them, for the prayerful, uh, prayerful alertness from them, and he came and saw them, did he feel very bad that they did not listen to him? He was feeling sorry for them, because even at that moment, if they were not able to keep themselves awake, and they did not even realize the trouble that was going to come soon. And just imagine how much painful it must have been for him when he saw this and he saw all these people, all the disciples sleeping and they did not listen to him. And this happened in the moment of darkness. And that's why he wanted his disciples to pray for him and to pray for one another so that they may be strong. In history, if we read, Cyrus captured an Armenian prince and princess and he had taken them captive to his place. And, the, and Cyrus asked the prince what he would do for his freedom. And the prince gave a very classic answer. He says, well, as for my kingdom and my liberty, I value them not. But if my blood would redeem my princess, I would cheerfully give it to her. And Cyrus, hearing this reply, liberated both of them. And later on, when someone asked the princess, what do you think of the prince? And what do you think of Cyrus? Because he was the one who set them free. And she replied, I did not observe him. My whole attention was fixed upon the generous man who would have purchased my liberty with his life. He was an example of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ purchased our liberty with his life. In John chapter 15, verse 13, it reads, Greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. John chapter 15, verse 13. Jesus proved that he was a Messiah by his work of love and kindness upon others, and also in the building of humanity. 
And at that time, it was not so easy. We may think that in olden times, people would not have had so much of uh, trouble preaching the gospel or talking about Jesus Christ to others. But if you see what had happened, like the flood, the flood that had come and other destruction that had been done, we see even at that time there was so much of evil going around in the world and it was equally difficult. And so at that time it was a fallen humanity that Jesus Christ had to lip, lift up. In Matthew chapter 7 verse 20 it says, Thus by their fruit you shall recognize them. And by the act of showing kindness to one another and also by the proof of love that we show on others, that is the proof, uh, proof of a true Christian. Jesus built furnitures and also other things when he was a small lad. And he built up people as a man. Jesus refused to, Jesus refused to let the banquet crowd criticize Mary and her perfume. Jesus uplifted Zacchaeus. Jesus welcomed little children that were scorned by others. Jesus treated the woman caught in adultery with kindness. Jesus treats you and me with the equal amount of grace. Amen. Thank you. He was a builder. Can we also be a builder? In 1 John chapter 3, verse 14 and 16, we read that chapter, 1 John chapter 3, verse 14 and 16. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. Anyone who does not love remains in death. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our life for our brothers. We have to be involved in helping one another. Let me show, uh, tell about a research that was done here. They did a study of more than 7,000 people and the research came out uh, uh, with a result that if a person is an active member of a club or a church that is trying to help build people up, that person will live longer than if he is not a member of a church or a club. And in fact, he will have a death rate three times lower, uh, lower than that of the other. They concluded that the more we are involved with building up of people, the more longer we will live. In James chapter 1, verse 27, it says, Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and vi widows in their distress and to help oneself from being polluted by the world. And we are here to continue the work of Jesus Christ. Let us build our brothers and sisters in this, in this world in Christ. Let us help our neighbors when they have the opportunity. Let us show them the love of Jesus Christ. And I will tell you that a church which is not reaching out to others is really passing out. We need to do the work of Jesus Christ in this world when it is needed. And if we don't do it now, it's going to be too late to do anything. Jesus Christ, as he said, he would separate the sheep to the right and the goats to the left. How many of us want to be on the right side? How many of us want to be with the sheep or with the goat? We all want to be with the sheep. I also want to be one with the sheep. The sheep is someone who is like Jesus Christ, who continues the work of Jesus Christ for Jesus Christ, who loves and helps one another with kind words, with his deeds and actions. And also, he is the builder of the others. The one who shows kindness and the one who shows Jesus' love. And may this be a grace for us that we may show unto others the love of Jesus Christ that is in us. And we will 
hope to love one another and build up and be a builder of Christ. This is my wish and prayer this morning. Amen. Amen.